Hi, and welcome to part two of Creating an Environment. My name is Corbin Hunter, and this is for cgcookie.com. If you are comfortable getting your image to uh, the stage you can see above me, uh, then please feel free to hop in right here and uh, come along for the ride. If you don't know how to get an image to what you see there, uh, you can check out part one of this tutorial where we set up the main shapes and I talk a bit about composition and all that fun stuff. This tutorial will be focusing more on the rendering and detailing, and it should be a lot of fun. So, so I started by elongating the trees a little bit just by scaling it, uh, and then I lightened up the water. After you look away from your image for some time, uh, when you come back you'll notice all sorts of weird little things. Things will just jump out at you, kind of like when you uh, flip your canvas. It's just even more severe when you don't look at it at all for a while. Uh, so I noticed some compositional things and decided to fix them up. Use the liquify tool here to just warp some trees around. And at the beginning stages of a painting, uh, that's totally fine to do because you don't have any details to disrupt. It's just the main forms that you're playing with. So I also enlarged the tree a little bit just by scaling it up on a new layer. And I'm about to go in and start doing the uh, background work here. So I started by laying in some more mist just for the sake of opacity and then grabbing uh, blocky colors and giving the trees a little bit more form. Right now they're just kind of weird looking pillars and I'd prefer them to be uh, full on trees. So I'm trying to uh, play with their shapes a bit m to uh, make them a little bit more interesting. Left to its own devices, the human mind uh, actually uses the same kind of motif every time it draws something. So, uh, for instance, uh, when when you try to draw a face, you'll most likely draw the same face every single time, or similar faces every time. And if you try to draw a tree, you'll draw really, really similar patterns in your trees over and over in your mountains. Same thing. So, if you uh, if you want something to look more believable, you have to give special thought to uh, randomization. You don't want them to look too similar. Uh, so that's something to definitely focus on. Here I was playing with that uh, the branches up there, trying to make something that didn't look too awkward and too unnatural. I recommend that before you do any painting that focuses around a specific kind of scenery, to actually look at photos uh, that show examples of that scenery, or go out in nature if you can, and uh, experience it for yourself, because you may think you know how to draw something, and you may think you know what you want it to to look like, but most likely your brain is just kind of uh, projecting an, an image into your head that lacks detail and isn't actually as realistic as you think it is. So um, challenge your preconceived notions and try to paint, um, paint things that actually look the way they are supposed to look, not just the way you think they look. Okay, so I'm working a little bit on the foliage here, trying to give it some 3D form and have the light hitting it nicely. Uh, I kind of battle with the trees all the way through this painting. Um, I didn't want to get way in and just paint it tree by tree by tree by tree, and I also didn't want to rely too heavily on um, pre-made pre brushes. By the end of it, I, I mostly just do use uh, some custom brushes. Okay, so here I uh, use the color balance tool to separate the darks from the lights. I made the shadows more uh, blue and green, or mostly just more green, and I made the highlights more orangey uh, to give that sense that our atmosphere in here is actually green because of the leaves, but the direct sunlight is more orange. Um, it's important not to go too monochrome, and later you'll see me adding more colors to keep it from going monochrome too. So here I was just using some texture brushes on the trees to uh, give them some moss and a bit more detail. And here, remember those vines that I painted in the corner? I want them all over the place. Uh, big droopy kind of uh, almost gloomy foliage up top there because it's a forest and stuff hangs from a forest roof. <laughs> That's the point of a forest kind of. So uh, big roots and big vines are the uh, most repeated shapes we've got going on here. Uh, there, I was just uh, adding some more water. 
So throughout this whole stage of the painting, I'm just trying to give everything more form, more detail, uh, and more interest in general, uh, playing with things until they look right. And you can see that I'm bouncing back and forth between background, foreground, midground, trees, grass, water, shrubs, whatever. Uh, I'm just trying to um, to fix anything that jumps out at me. A good rule of thumb is to work background to foreground. Another good rule of thumb is to always work on the thing that is bugging you the most. So in this case, every time I noticed something that was bugging me, I'd go in and uh, try to fix it. You can get caught going in endless circles that way though, so uh, sometimes it is necessary to just hunker down on uh, a specific part of the painting, just focus in and uh, kind of get her done, you know? Okay, so here I gave it a perspective shift. You can see me flipping back and forth between that. I wanted uh, I wanted a sense of scale in these trees, so I gave it a perspective shift and I also um, change the scale of the trees a little bit more. I wanted them to be tall and reaching and and like they had some some weight and some height to them. So I'm using the a very small set of texture brushes here. I've got a chalk brush with a uh, dual brush overlay and I've also got one. I don't know where I got it from but it's a pretty grungy kind of noisy texture. It's I, it's good to use uh, super textured brushes sometimes just for the sake of uh, getting some detail in there. Right here what you can see is I uh, wanted more unified um, color fades, greener in the shadows and whatnot. And then right here I decided that it was too monochrome and so I'm adding some really bright colors in and I dropped the opacity on those. But uh, So you, you can barely even notice that they're there, but they help to break up those monochrome golds and greens that I've got going on. Uh, here I'm adding some more uh, sort of dense leaves to the uh, upper canopy because I felt that it was too open. It looked like uh, the trees just kind of ended at the top of the canvas instead of stretching above and, and growing more up there. You kind of want to suggest what's beyond the canvas sometimes like that. Anyway, what I was saying with the uh, texture brushes is that I think it's important to get uh, a sort of density of detail um, that's really hard to get with just your standard round brushes. It's definitely possible. You just zoom way in and you pour a lot of time into it and you can get um, photorealism and high, high texture density. But that takes a long time and it's uh, pretty hard to do. I come from a uh, pencil background. I can um, draw for ages and ages. <laughs> and um, I was doing some photorealism in pencils before I started focusing on digital media and it can take a long time with a pencil to get photorealism. You just have to pour time and effort in, but it's possible. Same way with painting, it's possible to get photorealism with just your standard hard edge brushes, but it's going to be faster uh, and a lot easier for you to get that kind of density with textured brushes. Uh, I think here I was searching for a, a certain brush. There we go. I used it down in the bottom left corner for those rocks. All my uh, custom brushes I'll include for the download. Okay, so here I flipped on that black and white layer again, and I uh, am playing with the balance a little bit, making sure the light is the way I want it, making sure the, uh, the forms read as kind of rounded tree trunks and not just flat pillars. Uh, you might have noticed that in this video you can't see my brush um, uh, my brush dialog and you can't see my layers or anything like that. I'm recording on a second screen here because on my main screen I'm zooming in and out so much so fast that if you could see it at this time lapse it would make you sick. You would just puke watching this video. So what you're seeing is just a kind of stabilized static version of what was actually going on. Uh, and a consequence of that is that you can't see the brushes and layers, but I'm not using too many layers. I'm not using a ton of crazy uh, layer modes, mostly just normal and then some soft light and overlay when I do um, adjustments. But for detailing and stuff, it's all just normal layers with uh, a couple texture brushes or just your standard round brush. I also use a bristly round brush at some points. 
So the trees I was kind of playing with and fighting with, and uh, ultimately this piece is, you know, it, it's it's about the trees, the water, and the uh, lights. So the trees need to be notable. So I decided to turn them into kind of mangrove sort of trees with big root systems, and um, I, I think that worked out pretty well. <laughs> Originally I was thinking more like just... I don't even know what to call them, but just swampy trees. But the mangroves are, are what did it for me. Uh, water is something you can spend a long, long time painting, but I didn't want to put too much time into it because it's pretty boring. And uh, uh, frankly, the best way to paint water is to just grab some photo references and just pour time into it, the same way that you paint anything else. Um, and in this painting, I didn't actually want to use too many photo references, uh, and I didn't want to use too many photo textures because I want to show you guys how to do it from scratch. Uh, it's not bad to use references or textures. That That is a totally acceptable way to paint. But in this video, I wanted to focus on showing you how to get where you're going completely from scratch, completely from imagination. So I rezzed up the canvas to, I think I'm working at something like four or five thousand pixels right now probably four four thousand pixels wide uh, and I'm in 16 to 9 uh, ratio okay so here I'm using a color dodge layer for sure and a noisy round brush just like before uh, and I'm just adding back in those little windows here, I flipped on the black and white layer to see the actual values of those windows. When you have a light source in a painting, it's important to make sure that it actually is light. Um, and what I mean by that is that it's important to make sure that the value of it, the actual just brightness of it, is very high. Uh, you'd be surprised at how often you see uh, stuff that's supposed to be glowing, but that's not painted with a high brightness value. If it's a light source, it should have a, a high value. So I was making sure that it did by using a uh, value check layer. There I was just using a uh, fuzzy brush to kind of get that soft watery feel that I wanted. This is uh, a kind of finishing technique that I didn't end up sticking with here. I played with it a bit and then I didn't keep it. But I do kind of like the way that it looked. So I'm going to add that back in in part three. Here again, two monochrome, uh, too many golds, too many greens, too many browns. So I tossed in some some slathers of color to try to keep things fresh. Uh, here you can see, as I was talking about the mangroves, you can see me start painting in some more complex roots, giving it some form. Uh, there's no trick to this step uh, of creating form and creating interesting objects. It's all about uh, just being loose with your lines. You'd be surprised at how, how far scribbles can go in a landscape painting. Um, that's basically it. Scribbles are your best friend. They give so much texture. So I'm just scribbling out some trees right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just a standard hard edge round brush. Uh, another tip for perspective is that the objects in the foreground should have the highest contrast rating and the uh, objects towards the background should have a much lower contrast. So you can see the background trees don't have a ton of contrast, whereas the foreground ones do. That helps to sell the illusion of depth in your image. And when you're doing a large scale painting like this, depth is really important. Uh, I was noticing that this is starting to look like a, uh, like these are just kind of normal sized trees, uh, but I definitely want them to come across as particularly large trees. So uh, I'll end up putting a lot more trees in near the end to suggest more scale. Oh, here we go with them right now. So I painted in some tree trunks all over the place, and then I went in with uh, that super helpful forest brush and started giving them tops. Uh, in part three, I'll end up rendering them a lot more, but for now, I just wanted to get the general feel of them. Forests like this take a very, very long time to render out properly, or you can use photo textures. Like I said, I'm not doing it with photo textures just from scratch, so uh, it would take really long for me to properly do these trees. 
Uh, and you guys, you guys frankly don't want to watch me render a whole forest. <laughs> it would take hours and it would be boring. So they, they don't end up looking incredible at this point, but all you need is time, effort, and reference, and you can make anything look awesome. So this should show you kind of my general workflow, and you can expand, you can extrapolate kind of what I'm doing here, and you can take it even farther than I have, uh, creating more realistic and more detailed paintings uh, just by zooming in and spending more time on them. So I'm using actually two different custom brushes. One of them I... I uh, I found one of them isn't mine, the more rounded one, but the uh, flatter topped one is something that I made myself and it's good for those. I don't even know what they're called, but uh, the trees you see a lot in like um, uh, like landscapes of China and around those Asian parts of the world with the uh, big tall mountains covered in trees growing off the sides of cliffs and stuff like that, it, those kind of trees. <laughs> Uh, so here I'm playing a lot with uh, trying to make them properly read so that they don't just look like uh, weird, weird fuzzes on the sides of the trees, but that they actually look like miniature trees. Uh, so a lot of that is uh, just by focusing on your lighting to convey the form of them. You know, you want the leafy parts to have a lot of volume, uh, or else they'll just read as kind of flat growth, which is what you want to avoid. So um, you want to keep in, mind, keep in mind your form and your lighting. You want to have strong silhouettes between, you know, foreground and background, and that's something I, I go back in and um, push again. I, I do it all through the painting, making sure that uh, foreground and background and midground are all separated. Uh, I think that happens right away here. Yeah, so I chose one darker color and one lighter color. And I'm going in and making sure that all the depth layers are separate. Uh, and then just some more light and some more detail on the water. <laughs> the water is giving me a lot of trouble right now. And um, I realized that I hadn't focused on it nearly as much as I'd focused on the rest of the piece. So. Uh, so I did that. And then a little bit of fog also from, you know, crashing water will make mist. And I'll add more of that in part three. So I'm just finishing up here by, uh, again, giving it more atmosphere, more fog. And then I go in a little bit with uh, a round brush with a bit of a jitter for the trees. And um, just kind of whatever popped out at me, I uh, tried to fix a little bit. A little bit more detail, a little bit more contrast in the foreground. And that wraps up this video. So thanks for joining me in part two of creating an environment. I hope you learned a lot of things. Uh, part three is going to focus more on final rendering and the tips and tricks you can use to push your image to a finished quality. So it doesn't look so much like a sketch and it looks more like a finished piece. I forgot to mention the time scale of these videos. Uh, so far I've spent in real time three hours painting this painting. You can do the same thing in less time or in more time, depending on what you're comfortable with. And the speed that you're going doesn't reflect the actual quality of the work that you're doing. So work at a speed that's comfortable for you and uh, you'll speed up as you improve. So don't focus on speed, focus more on quality. And that's all I have to say about that. So once again, my name is Corbin Hunter and I've done this tutorial for cgcookie.com. Join us in part three for the final steps of creating an environment.